All right, so today's video isn't super glamorous. Uh, what we're doing is we're gonna be talking about how you can use Unity's UI system to create some debug functions for yourself. So for example, last time we talked about how we can make um, our information be saved to a text file. Today, we're gonna be looking at how we can take our pause panel and add some little debug buttons to it so that we can have our pause panel do stuff that we might want to do that we maybe don't want to change in code. So for example, the one that we're adding today is reset save, which is to take all of those save files and delete them in case you don't want them to be there the next time you boot up the game. Uh, however, these little debug buttons can do whatever you want them to. You can have a debug button to reset your number of hearts. You can have a debug button to change your attack power. Maybe if you don't want your attack power to be one anymore. And these can all just be hooked up right here. In general, I like to have them stand out from the way the rest of the game looks. So that way, I know I shouldn't include them in the build. So we're going to talk about how to do all of this. And let's dive right in. OK, so welcome back. Today, we're going to be doing this kind of a, this is going to be kind of a loosey-goosey video, which for some of you, I'm sure is fine. For others, I'm. You, if you don't like it when I don't know exactly what I'm doing when I'm trying to do it, maybe try to just check out the GitHub after I update it after this. But I'm going to go loosey-goosey here. We're going to test some stuff out. So the first thing I want to do is an issue that has been bothering me for a second. And the reason I need to address this now is because I want to make my save system part of the pause screen. So at the moment, if I hit pause, it looks just fine here. And the reason it looks just fine here is because this screen is the same size as when I I made the uh, the pause menu. However, if you were to resize this at all, it doesn't resize well. And there's a few things that are why it doesn't resize well. So let's get those fixed first and foremost. So I want to go to my pause canvas here. And when I made my pause canvas, one of the things I forgot to do is change this from, I want it screen space overlay, from constant pixel size to scale with screen size. And I want the reference resolution to be the same as on my regular canvas, which is 800 by 600. And same number of reference pixels as well. So that one's using 48, so we're going to use 48 reference pixels here. This has to do with how the size of things show up with your canvas. So now I'm going to click on my pause canvas. I'm going to jump way out. I'm going to open it in, find my pause panel, I'm going to turn that on. And you'll see now that it's resized to be gigantic in relation to everything else in the scene. So what I'm going to do is uh, scale this down. And as I scale it down, you'll notice that the children of it are not scaling proportionally. We'll fix that in just a moment. So I'm going to put this here. And then what size do I want it? Let's see, 500 by 400 sounds not too bad. That looks good. Now I'm going to grab the uh, items inside of it, in the Text Mesh Pro text. Uh, let's see, this whole thing is 500, so I'm going to make my Text Mesh Pro say 450. And for the height, I'm just going to go with, uh, let's see, if I'm doing 450, I might as well do like 128 for the height. Gonna, oops, did not mean to do that. I'm going to grab my Text Mesh Pro and put it about right here. Now I need to change the size. So currently it's 155. Let's go down to say 48. That's too small. Let's do 64, 124. That's too big. Let's just do 100. Nope. 100, still too big. Let's go 90. All right, that's good. And let's size this down a bit. Back to the 124 I wanted it at. And we'll put this up here, here, just like that. And where are the anchors for this? Are they in the center of the screen? They are. So I'm going to anchor this um, to the center of the screen, or not to the center of the screen, but to the center of its parent so that it's not going to go outside. So I'm going to click on my anchors. I want them up here, but I actually want them to go all the way down. So it's going to be proportional top to bottom from the middle. What that means, <clears throat> pardon me, what that means is that when it resizes itself, it's going to resize itself knowing that it needs to anchor itself halfway on X 
and its pivot point is halfway through it, so that should be good. I'm going to change my position x to zero since it's that weird floating point number. Cool. Now I got to do my buttons. So I'm going to grab both of them here. I want to resize them both at the same time. Um, I don't have anything. Well, their width is a bit too big. So let's make them maybe maybe 300, and let's make their height like 64. That's not too bad. And then I'm just going to place these here, and then we'll grab this one. And I'm going to put this here. And the reason why is I'm going to have to have like something to bring me to an inventory menu, which is what we're building up to here. Now I want to place the... Yeah, I'm going to leave these centered here, like they are right now. All right, cool. So there's all my changes to my pause canvas. Now what I want to do here is I'm going to do some debug stuff. If you'll notice, let me turn off my pause panel so that it works like it's supposed to. If I hit play, it's going to automatically load in all of those um, save files that we made, which means that my character... Oh, apparently I didn't do the... Uh, oh, that's right. So, But it is going to remember that our character should have five hearts, which is something that we don't want to do because sometimes we're going to want to test it as if we're starting from the beginning. Not all the time. We'll talk about some debug features that we could add and how you could extend this on your own. But sometimes we're going to want to have that reset back so that we can experience the game from the beginning. So to do that, I'm going to go out of my play mode here. I'm going to go to my pause panel. Turn that back on. I'm going to add another button, and I'm going to have this button kind of stand out from the others. So I'm going to add a UI. Actually, let's do this in the image. I'm going to add a UI uh, button. And I'm not going to change the style of this at all. I'm going to put it kind of somewhere that's out of the way so it's going to stick out to me before I make any kind of build. And I'm not going to use that fancy script for it. So this is going to be a button that exists specifically to reset all the save files. Reset, save. So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to change the text to be reset, save. All right, cool. Now I need to make a function that I'm going to tie this to. So I'm going to leave my pause panel open for now, but I'm going to go to my game save manager. Let's open that up. And we're going to make a reset uh, function that we can call when we reset everything. That way we're not automatically loading in those values that we don't want to load in. So Visual Studio is going faster than usual, so maybe I don't need to fast forward. OK, cool. So I'm going to make a new method here. I'm going to call this a public because I need to access it from that button. Void reset scriptables. And this is going to exist to reset the scriptable objects. So it's going to start out similar to my loading scriptables. I'm going to do a for loop over all of the objects. So for int i is 0, i is less than objects dot count i plus plus then I want to check to see if a file exists for that scriptable so if file dot exists and the file that I want to check is going to use that application dot persistent data path that I was using for everything else so I'm going to jump down here did I forget a something there Okay, well, oh, because <laughs> I did plus, plus, plus. That's weird. All right, so if file exists, and the file I want to find is application.persistentdatapath plus string.format, all of that stuff. I'm going to copy this and paste it into here. And I need one more. All right. Then what I want to do is file file equals, actually, Let's do file.delete, and then I have to tell it the path to delete. So I'm just going to pass in that path. Um, 
needs another, there we go. All right, so that reset scriptables button is going to reset my scriptable objects by deleting the files that are in storage so that I wouldn't be loading from them next time. And this is just one way that you can create a debug system. Now, you could extend this by having maybe another button here that changes hearts to be full. So maybe a button here would go through the heart containers, uh, set that to be five, and then save it. We could maybe have another button to do hearts to the minimum. Maybe do another button to be magic up or magic down to change the maximum magic value there. Uh, if you have a level system, you could have one that would add levels or subtract levels. Um, you'd have one that adds a weapon or subtracts a weapon. You can just kind of, there's all kinds of different ways that you can make this debug function. Then when you go to actually build your game, you would take this reset button and just take it out. You could physically delete it or you could just uh, inactivate it like that, which is why I have it so that it kind of sits differently. In fact, to continue making it to look different, I'm going to give it a nice orange color. So it's going to stand out against everything. Actually, let's go red. There we go. And I'm going to give the font a nice bright white so that it really stands out. OK, cool. Now I'm going to go to my, did I save that? I did. Now I'm going to go to my game save manager. Uh, actually, that's not where I wanted to go. I wanted to go to my button, where I already was. I'm going to add a new feature. It's going to come from the game save manager. The function is going to be game save manager and it's reset scriptables. Uh, now it's something very similar where you can add a manual save button to your game here. So a manual save button would probably be best if it looked like these that are already here. So I'm going to grab my quit to main menu. I'm going to duplicate that and drag it down. That's not too bad. I'm going to change this from quit to main to be save. And then this is going to link up to the game save manager as well. So game save manager, save scriptables. OK. Now we can do the same thing with a load button on the main screen. So all right, cool. We've got that all set up. Let's go to our pause panel. Let's turn it off. Let's hit play. And what I'm going to do here is just show you that I have my five hearts. I'm going to bring up my pause panel. I'm going to click reset, save, and then I'm going to quit. Now, this scene actually has the same issue that we had on the last scene, where I didn't set this up correctly. So if you export it to something that doesn't have this exact resolution, it's going to have problems. But if I go to new game now, oh, hmm. it should have deleted everything. Why did it not delete? Oh, that's what the problem was. I deleted them, but the values of the scriptable objects had already changed in memory. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit reset save. I'm going to resume, and then I'm going to... Now this is kind of a pain in the butt, but again, you could have a button here that specifically changes the values of things like the chests, uh, the player's heart containers, and you could even make that into its own panel so that you can set those things to be whatever you want them to be. Um, let's go player inventory. Let's make sure we don't have the bow. All right, cool. Now if I hit escape, I'm going to save. Now if I quit to the main menu and do a new game, my player's back to where I want them to be. The other thing that you probably want to do is use the same pattern that we used on the chests to make sure that they're going away on the heart containers here. Because you don't want a heart container, something that adds a full heart to your player, you don't necessarily want that to be something that is just going to be there the next time you come in. So maybe have just a couple of these in your world, uh, have them difficult to get to, 
and then make sure that they have a Boolean value on them, just like the chests do, so that they know if they should be active or if they should be inactive. So just a thought here. Um, all right, cool. So this is super, super brief into one way that you can use Unity's UI to debug stuff. But this is how I debug games that I personally work on is by instead of just manually doing everything, I'll make a button for usually it'll be like in the pause panel, but sometimes I'll have like a little panel that if you click on opens a new panel that has all of my debugging options. And then I'll just just turn that panel off when I when I port it. So there we go. Uh, next time we're going to start talking about the inventory system. Uh, if you've already followed along, the next video is going to be a little bit of a retread. However, I'm going to do a few things differently than I've done it in the past. Uh, we're going to be building an inventory system that is expandable. You can add stuff to it. Um, you can pick up health potions that you can save and then use from the inventory system. Your items will be able to stack. You won't have drag and drop because I think that that's something that's kind of different and it doesn't feel to me like it should go with the Zelda game. But um, yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing for the inventory. So uh, check that out. That'll be starting in just a day or two here. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments down below. If you like the video, uh, feel free to give me a like. You can still give me a like, even if you were kind of meh on it. Um, and I guess you can still give me a dislike, too. Apparently, Unity treats dislikes the same way it treats likes, which is strange. Um, <laughs> you can subscribe, hit the bell icon, just, just go nuts on the buttons down there. Like, click them all. I mean, sure, why not? Just go crazy. Uh, shout out to everybody in my Discord, especially Faker and Sir Psycho, yeah. You guys are indispensable and awesome. And all the people out there who are answering questions, like uh, Jacqueline, Rafael, Magic Panda, you guys are great. If you haven't checked out my Discord yet, you really should, especially if you're struggling or new to game development. There's a lot of really good, really patient people there who are willing to help you with what you're working on. So uh, thank you very much, and I hope everybody has themselves a wonderful day. Oh, yeah, and I have a Patreon too. There's a Patreon link. There's at the moment, there's only a couple exclusive Patreon videos. There's three, but I'm going to be adding to that as we go. So, yeah, thanks very much. Have a great day.